Hey there, Becca here from Inside the Square, and in this training, I am super excited to talk to you about a brand new feature available in Squarespace called Background Art. It's a new option that we have to apply some really interesting, automatically generated styles for a page section background. Now, checking this out for the very first time, I was a little overwhelmed with how many options there are. There are a lot of different styles to choose from and tons of different unique settings for each one of those styles. So I decided to record a training to walk you through all of it. Let's explore some of these new options together by hopping into my demo site and clicking around. So here we are in my demo site. I'm going to hop into edit mode, and then we're going to navigate to this icon right here to edit the page section settings. Here I can click on background and select art on the far right hand side. And these are all of our amazing new options. We're going to dig into all of these together. Let's start with the first one. I'll just click around some of these presets so you can see. This one right here, I like to call fluid images. And anytime you see these three circles underneath, that means you can grab one of the preset styles that Squarespace has already created. Now, every single one of these styles will have the settings icon right here that you can navigate into to change up all kinds of settings about that particular background art, adjusting colors, images, sizes, animation styles, all kinds of fun stuff. Let's look around at some of the other options. This one right here, I like to call fluid images. This one here, I like to call fluid topography because this gives it almost a topography map style setting if you play around with some of these options. Again, I'm clicking through the preset ones, but every single one of these has a settings icon that you can click on to adjust colors and all kinds of things about that particular style of background art. Let's keep this overview going and then we'll dig into some of those settings, okay? This one right here, I like to call the soft glow. It's more of a radial gradient, but it also has some animation options. Down here, we just have a standard gradient that we can change the angle of, give some animation options or some noise distortion, all kinds of cool stuff. This one here I refer to as camouflage. If we click through here, you can see those will adjust. And again, settings option here allows us to change the color, shape, size, and animation motion. And then last but not least, we have some pretty interesting squares. Again, we've got some presets we can click through or we can check out the settings for each one of those squares. Before we dig into the rest of this, let me show you one last time how we got there. I'm in a standard page section. I'm gonna click this icon here to open up my page section settings menu, navigate to background and select art. Now you can select none and just get that solid color background or you can click around through any of these presets, starting with this one for example, or changing it up to any of the circles beneath. Whatever you've selected, you have the option to edit all kinds of settings with this icon right here. So it doesn't matter which one you're in, you'll notice every single one of these background art styles has a lot of setting options that we can explore. Are you ready to dig into those? Awesome. Now, if there's already one that you're very comfortable with that you want to work with, like let's say this fluid images right here, I do have mini trainings about each one. So you don't have to sit through the entire lesson. <laughs> Feel free to click on the links in the description below, or if you're on my website, scroll down a little bit and you'll see links to the individual videos. However, you're here in the training on how to create background art. So let's just dig right in, shall we? Starting with this fluid options one, I'm fluid images one, I should say. I click that settings icon and I've got eight different images I can choose. We've got this kind of blob, little squiggly blob, kind of curved line, regular line, crossed out line, <laughs> circles, a starburst or a wider starburst. No matter which image you start with, you can adjust the image tint and background color. Now these are being pulled from my color palette, but you'll notice if I click on this circle, I can select any color from my color palette that I want to change it to or I can hop into custom and I can just pick a color using the slider options and features here, or even enter in a hex color code that I want to use down below. So again, I can pick something from my color palette or choose a custom color. And it's the exact same for the background. If you click that circle, you can navigate to anything you already have set up in your color palette or choose a custom color that suits the style you're going for, for that particular design. Let's go ahead and stick with the palette in a way that's easy to see what we're changing. Alrighty, scrolling down here, this adjusts the scale, which is the actual size of that object. I can make it small, medium, or large, or click these three dots and adjust that using the slider. Now it might take a second to load as you're playing around with this. As you can see, I'm kind of glitching a little bit. It's not really a glitch. It's just taking a second to load my change. So that's why that's happening. After that, we have number of images. I can reduce the number of images being shown or make it super busy if I want to, totally up to you. 
and then you have the filter option. There are all kinds of interesting layouts here, circle, cross stitch, cube, gingham, gradient, houndstooth, and stitch. Play around with those. You can also adjust the pattern color for the filter, lots of options. Now, last but not least, let's check out the wave setting here. Selecting wave, you'll notice everything is set to zero. I can increase this and this will actually change this animation style for these particular items right here. When I select that, that's going to change how they actually are played in an animation when this page loads. So definitely explore those options. Now, if you're overwhelmed and don't know what to pick, you can click randomize and Squarespace will just generate a style for you. So one last time, we're here in this particular top one here. I'm calling this fluid images. If we click on this icon here for settings, you can change the object itself, the colors, the scale, the number of images, play around with the pattern. You've got a lot of interesting options there and adjust the wave however you'd like or pick randomize and let Squarespace do it for you. All right, should we keep going? Let's head over into fluid topography. I like to call this topography because it reminds me of a map. Squarespace didn't name it, so that's what we're going with, okay? So again, we've got some presets down here if you wanna grab something that's already been created or click that settings icon and let's play around with this one. Same color options here if you wanna change these up to something different, totally customizable. You can also select invert colors. See what happens when I do that? It switches them around for me. Now size and shape definitely has to do with the size of this topography setting here. You'll see we can scroll out a bunch and it looks really busy in the background make it really large in size, and we'll get a lot less detail. Now motion is obviously going to affect travel speed, morph speed, movement direction. Play around with these settings to see how that changes up the way that this is displayed. And then texture has to do with creating the different layers here. If we increase the number of steps, you'll see we're actually, let's see, I'll pull that back a little bit and I'll turn on bevel so you can see, we're actually going to get, trying to make this more obvious for us, hang on. I'm gonna increase that, let's increase the strength too. There we go, now you can see. <laughs> when we actually change the steps, we're going to get a lot more layers of color. So if I reduce this down to where it was before, I only, have, I only have a few steps, it makes it a lot less detailed. Increasing this will give me a ton of steps and changes in color gradients. Now we can also toggle on blur if we just want it to kind of fade in the background a little bit. But here, if we toggle off blur, that's where we get the opportunity to add this bevel. I added that so you could see the steps a little bit more clearly. It gave it kind of an outline. I'm gonna turn that off so you can see. When we have a dramatic number of steps, it's really not obvious without the bevel. If we reduce that down, we can see a lot more of the difference between the starting point and ending point of that particular color. But bevel is pretty cool because we can toggle that on and change up the angle, the size, the strength, all kinds of fun stuff. Again, blur and bevel are separate. You can't have something blurred and beveled at the same time using this fluid topography, so keep that in mind. And just like our last option, you can also pick randomize and have Squarespace generate one for you, totally up to you. So let's go ahead and head back and check out some of our other options here. Next up, we have what I'm referring to as the soft glow. If I click on this soft glow option, we can once again choose a preset if we'd like to. We've got three options there or we we'll click the settings icon and manually adjust this. Start and end color exactly the same as it was in those last two. Switching that will invert the colors. Obviously it says invert, you're following. Let's talk about some of the other settings available here. We have shape and size. Scrolling down, this will adjust the radial size. At the time of recording this, we're still in beta mode, so this is probably going to say Y once they actually correct that. I'm pretty sure one is radial X and one is radial Y, but bear with me. And feel free to use these sliders to adjust it how you see fit. Now you can select small, medium, or large, and you'll see how that's actually changing the lighter color in my background there. Or clicking those three dots, you can manually adjust it just like usual. Now scrolling down, we've got motion. You can actually enable this to follow the cursor. If I toggle this on, the actual animation for this particular glow will follow my cursor as it moves above the page section background. I'm not a fan of that look, but feel free to play around with that. Then you also have texture. This adjusts the distortion as well as, let's scroll down here, the noise. The noise is that slightly pixelated staticky look that we've got going on here. If we set the noise to high, you can see it's definitely pixelated. If we turn it off, it'll look very smooth. It'll be a smooth blend. So if we set that to high, it'll be super pixelated. And again, we have the three dot option and that allows us to change the intensity and scale, which gives us a little bit more customization. 
And now right above that, we have quite a few options here for the actual distortion. That's how we're getting this blend of these different circles. Adjust the complexity, direction, intensity, speed, seed, smoothness, and morph speed. So many options. Can't believe I said that that fast. Anywho, have fun exploring that or just quickly select one of the presets like low or high and Squarespace will do the hard work for you. Now, just like the other ones, you guessed it, we have a randomize option. If you click randomize, Squarespace will edit all of those settings to create a unique type of background art for that page section. Alrighty, let's go back. We've got three more to go. Clicking on this one, this is more of a linear gradient where we don't actually have the radial gradient of the soft glow. This is a gradient that will go in a specific direction based on angle. Again, we can select one of the presets down here like these options, or just like the last one, feel free to click the settings icon and let's play around with this a little bit. Now hopping into shape and size, this allows us to adjust the start and end position of our main colors. And then this feature is really cool in my opinion, we can adjust the angle of the gradient. Just using this slider, dragging it to the left or the right, you'll notice how we're actually getting an angle gradient based off of these two colors. I've got my start color up on the top right hand side and then my end color on the bottom left. That was adjusted with the angle. And then again, start position and end position. Feel free to play around with those until your gradient looks perfect. Now hopping into texture, we have the same opportunity for distortion, complexity, direction, intensity, speed, seed, smoothness, and morph speed. Play around with those until it looks just perfect and feel free to add some noise too. Maybe setting that to high if you want to, you'll get that pixelated grainy look, creating a bit of a static style for your background art. And surprise, surprise, randomize. Feel free to click that and Squarespace will get you started in a direction, creating a completely unique background art based off of your colors and options here. Now let's hop back out of here, two more to go. This option here I like to call camouflage. Again, we've got some presets to play around with. Uh, this will just be some interesting morphing shapes here, very similar to the morphing shapes that we selected at the top, but these actually change in color. These particular ones, the fluid images, that first set we went through, they're all going to be the same color. This is different because it actually changes the colors of the shapes. So let's click on that icon there, and you'll see we have shape color and background color. Now changing the shape color here, let's go ahead and adjust this to a lighter color. I'll select the white color from my color palette, and you'll see how we actually have different colors here going from the solid white to a light gray. This background art style will change up the color of different aspects of the background art. Unlike the fluid images, let's hop back one more time. This first one we selected, all of those images will be the same color. This creates different colors. You following? All right, cool. Let's go back to these settings. Shape and size, we only get the option to have that particular shape, but you can adjust it to how it moves from the edge or the center of the particular page section. Edge will pull the shapes out to the edge and center will obviously put them in the center. Or you can select linear and that'll put them on a linear trajectory. Now after that we have density and that will adjust the number of shapes, low density or high density. And here you can change the shape size and the shape variance. Right now they're fairly similar to each other. We can shift that up to have them really varying in size and shape or shift that back down so that they're all very similar. Now last but not least we have motion. Again, speed morph. This one has a wobble and scroll movement. Scroll movement will make sure that those shapes animate with the same speed that you're scrolling through a page section, which is pretty handy if you have a lot of content on your page section. So play around with all those settings or click randomize and have Squarespace get you started in a general direction and adjust from there. Now let's go back to the very last one on the bottom left here. This one I like to call animated boxes. This is where we get the square in Squarespace, my friends. We can click on one of these pre-made options to check out what they already have set there. And again, we've got those settings. Let's explore these. Start and end color exactly the same, invert those colors, have fun with that. But then shape and size is where we get really creative here. If you click the three dots, you can adjust the size, width, height, and depth for all of those boxes completely separately. One of the preset sizes, this one right here, will create tiny boxes and I can't adjust those separately. But if I click those three dots, this allows me to adjust the width and the height so they don't have to be perfect squares if I don't want them to be. 
definitely adjust all four of those options until it looks perfect. Now after that we have motion where we're adjusting the speed here and then also placement. Pixelated will actually separate them out a little bit so it's less of a fluid movement and more of an individual movement for their displacement. Let's click on pixelated and see what this looks like. Now you'll see how they're showing up as individual boxes. If I select turbulent instead, we're going to get more of that fluid motion with how they move. And again, we've got those three dots. Click on that to adjust that into something customized. Last but not least, we have texture. This is actually going to change the position of the light. So we can set this to top, bottom, or click those three dots to change the direction of the light on the X, Y, and Z axis, as well as the brightness. Explore those opportunities or just use one of the presets for top or bottom and see how that adjusts the actual light position for these square objects. And then morph is something that you can toggle on right there and take a look at how fascinating that looks. Definitely changes up the style and creates a very unique background image. Now, last but not least, Let's randomize it. Selecting randomize, Squarespace will edit all of those things and I can continue to customize from there if I want to or call it good. So again, you've got a lot of different options for your background art. I'm gonna click out of here and I'll show you one last time how we got there. I'm here in edit mode. I'm gonna click this edit page section settings icon and select art. You can navigate to none, no problem, or pick any one of these pre-made options selecting whichever one you'd like, grab a pre-made option down here, or click the settings option for any one of these background art styles and adjust the colors and all kinds of other settings associated with it. In the description below, check out the tiny tutorials that I have for each one of these settings where we explore those just a little bit more. Just remember how we got there. That was clicking this icon right here for the page section, selecting background, and then selecting art. From here, you can grab one of these pre-made ones to start with, and hop into the settings and start customizing. Whatever you decide to go with, just make sure you select save on the top left hand side of your page and you'll be good to go. Alrighty, that's it for this quick overview of the background art feature now available in Squarespace. To learn a little bit more about each one of those individual styles, I have some smaller bite-sized walkthroughs available on my website for free inside the square.co forward slash background art. Head on over there to check out some of those trainings about the individual settings inside each one of these new background art options. Thank you so much for watching this training video. I hope you learned something awesome. And most importantly, have fun with your Squarespace website. Bye for now.